Welcome to Preston Dakota Sports Monday presented by Spotted. For photos and video of area events, go to spotted.yankton.net. Now here are your hosts, Jeremy Hoyk and James Simbrook. Hello, welcome to another Sports Monday video alongside sports editor James Simbrook. This is Jeremy Hoyk, and we've got a unique mix of stories to talk about this week, James. And we're going to start right away with the Yankton Gazelles, who picked up a couple wins this last weekend. Uh, yeah, the Gazelles uh, played the Rapid City schools, uh, came out on fire against Rapid City Stevens, uh, uh, put the, uh, uh, took it to them uh, pr in terms of pressure and end up with 56-27 victory. And then uh, Saturday afternoon against Rapid City Central, a quick turnaround there, another strong defensive effort, uh, led uh, pretty much the entire way and uh, come away with a 10-point victory there, 64-54. Yeah, pretty dominating on both sides, especially against Central, a team that had a pretty good season last year. You know, a pretty impressive showing for the Gazelles. Oh yeah, I mean, Rapid City Central was a 17-win team a year ago. They were a state tournament team a year ago. In fact, uh, the Gazelles played them in the state tournament last year. And uh, and they came out and uh, they did cause some problems at times, but the Gazelles were able to uh, to uh, keep things under control, get a lot, of, uh, a lot of offensive and defensive help from a lot of different players and uh, end up coming away with a nice victory. In both games, I think we each saw one of those games this weekend, and I think we both saw the Gazelles finish plays. I mean, they were getting turnovers on defense, but more importantly, they were able to finish at the basket in either that or get to the free throw line. Oh, yeah, I mean, you had a, a lot of different players attacking the basket, uh, making those shots, and when they weren't making those shots, they were getting fouled, getting to the line, and converting those free throws. And that's something we hadn't seen earlier this year. I mean, this is, I mean a lot of that is just... This uh, player is getting more comfortable with their roles and uh, and feeling and and feeling uh, confident and uh, taking that confidence and turning it into aggression. And one of the things the coaching staff had to be impressed with was the was the bounce scoring in terms of you know your, Abby Burbach wasn't even in double figures against Stevens and you still win by 30 points. I mean. They've got to be impressed with that. Well, yeah, I mean, they had a lot of different players score in that game. A lot of different players score against Rapid City Central. I think Burbach was the leading scorer in that game. But uh, but you're getting a lot of contributions, uh, not just out of the starters, but off the bench. Uh, a great uh, great effort from uh, Laura Ekron this weekend. I think she was 8 of 10 from the free throw line against Rapid City Central. Uh, hit a lot of big free throws down the stretch. And... Uh, and it's what they're, and that's the kind of effort they're going to need uh, coming down the stretch. And now the Gazelles are three and eight on the season, and they have a they have a pretty tough weekend ahead of them. Well, yeah, I mean uh, Thursday night Sioux Falls O'Gorman in uh, Sioux Falls, and uh, O'Gorman remembers what happened <laughs> last time uh, the Gazelles went up to Sioux Falls, which was uh, the uh, region final last year where uh, Yankton pulled away for an overtime victory. A lot of those players are gone. A lot of them are still around. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, that uh, the coaching staff, O Gorman, is going to remind the remind uh, the Knights that uh, the Gazelles were the reason they didn't go out to Rapid City last year. Uh, so that's going to be a tough test there. And then Saturday night, uh, Brandon Valley here at home. That was a four game, uh, four point game earlier this year uh, up in up in uh, Brandon season opener, and that was with the, the Gazelles without Abby Burbach. But uh, Brandon Valley's been on a roll since then. They are one of two unbeatens in the state, and uh, and that really, I mean, that could really be a big game. So I mean, no matter how you slice it, it's going to be a tough weekend. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and speaking of interesting weekends, uh, last Saturday you got to uh, got to go up to Brookings and uh, and take in the South Dakota State North Dakota State women's game. Uh, South Dakota State, uh, another great season for the uh, for the Jackrabbit women. 19 and 2 uh, just moved back into the uh, Associated Press top 25. Uh, they are 24th this week. Uh, they've been in the uh, ESPN uh, ESPN top 25 uh, pretty much uh, in the last month and a half. And uh, what did you see up there? Well, you and I have been talking about the Jacks all season, especially with Yankton's Katie Corderman in the starting lineup. So we've been kind of following her stats and. You know, we've just been hearing a lot about them, and it just worked out schedule-wise where, you know, we were able to, to, to send a reporter up there. And I went up there, and it, it was even more interesting because it was the North Dakota State rivalry game. So there was that added that added intensity, and also, you know, there was a lot of media there. Frost Arena was just so, I mean, it wasn't sold out, but it was full. I mean, that is just a Division One atmosphere. That was how, that's how I would describe it. They, they have such a great atmosphere up there for basketball. 
And it, it was a very close game. I was kind of excited that it was close rather than a, a big blowout. But the SDSU women did pull out for the win. They won by 16. And we're going to be having some feature stories later in the week. We'll have a, a feature on Caddy Corneman. And also, uh, Abby Plucker of North Dakota State. She's originally from Parker, South Dakota, but she's a little injured this year. She's a little banged up. And so we're going to hopefully have those feature stories within the next couple days. Yeah, and we'll also, also try and tie something together in terms of uh, uh, the Jacks and Bison's uh, reaction to uh, the potential for USD to be in the Summit League with them. Yeah, and that was something that Abby talked about. You know, she said it was, she's pretty anxious for that to happen. And, you know, we'll have more about that in the week. All right, uh, turning back to high school, uh, the Gazelles gymnastics team uh, had their last uh, home match of the regular season on Thursday. They had two matches last week, and both uh, both team scores uh, for the week were around that 127 mark. They're starting to show that consistency that uh, Coach Yeomans has been looking for. Yeah, I mean, they had two consistent efforts this week, and so, you know, in, in reading what Coach Yeomans had to say, it sounds like he's he's more more optimistic about this team. Things are maybe coming around where, where he thought they would, and I mean, that's great to see because, you know, you, you want to see a team perform like they've been performing. The Gazelles are starting to come around at the right time. ESD is less than two weeks away, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, uh, February 7th in a, in Watertown, so, uh, so they're coming together at the right time. Yeah, it's been, like you said, I just can't believe it's already almost conference time. It's just amazing how fast things go, but, you know, they have, a, they have a little bit of time to prepare for ESD, so we'll see how they do. And speaking of time flying by, the, uh, <laughs> the GPAC women's softball preseason poll came out today. Uh, uh, Mount Marty starts their season March 9th in Tucson, and feeling the weather today, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure uh, a lot of people would love to make that trip. Uh, Mount Marty... Uh, Ranked 13th out of 13 in the uh, preseason poll, but uh, been talking to Coach uh, Albert Fernandez lately. Uh, he's in his he's uh, now setting a record uh, for longevity in terms of uh, the rebirth of the uh, Mount Marty softball program. Uh, he's been I believe this is his fourth season with the team, and uh, prior to that, no no coach had stuck around for more than two years. So he's starting to build some consistency, starting to get some players coming back, uh, knowing what to expect and working hard. So I think um, I'm not going to be surprised if they finish a lot higher than 13th. Yeah, I guess we can't say we're really surprised by 13th, but they've got a lot of talent. I mean, there's some veteran leadership on that team, I think. I don't see them finishing last in the GPAC, that's for sure. Definitely. And last but not least, the Yankton Bucks uh, made the Rapid City trip this year uh, while the Gazelles were at, were at home. Friday night lost a tough one at Rapid City Stevens, 72-53. Uh, Gave up a 21-0 run in that game, uh, and I'm sure uh, Coach Gross would uh, would uh, be more than happy to tell, uh, tell you he was not pleased with that. But uh, they bounced back, uh, came back and beat a uh, quality Rapid City Central team uh, by 257-55. Uh, Chris Hubbs banks in a shot at the buzzer to uh, to give them the win, and uh, that was a game that they were they were in all the way through and uh, got it done at the right time. I think especially after that Stevens game on. Friday, I believe that was yes. uh, the Stevens game on Friday. You've got to think the Bucks were maybe a little relieved to come out of there with a one and one split, especially considering how close the Central game was. But you know, overall, I think it's you've got to, there are some things to take positively and negatively for me from this road trip. You know, the Bucks are four and six, and I mean, it is a little impressive that they were able to bounce back after that game on Friday. Oh yeah, and uh, going out to I mean, you got a six-hour drive, and then you play, and then you play a game. Uh, go to the hotel. Get uh, get there about midnight. Get up at uh, get up at six in the morning. Play another game. I and mean, it's not an easy schedule. And uh, to come out of there with even one win is uh, pretty good. And uh, speaking of hoping to come out with one <laughs> win, uh, the, the schedule this week is uh, not any easier. Uh, Thursday night uh, at home against uh, Sioux Falls O'Gorman, traditionally one of the top teams in the state. And another traditional power on Friday night, uh, Sioux Falls Roosevelt. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously the big name there is the Larson kid who's already committed to Iowa. They've got a few other kids as well. Uh, record probably not where uh, Coach Bob Wilbur would like it, but uh, still a quality team. Yeah, and you've got to think the Bucks are just looking at these two games and saying, okay, if we can do what we did in Rapid City, maybe getting a one-on-one -on -one split, I think we'll be we'll be pretty they'll be pretty happy with that. But like you talked about O'Gorman, that's that's here on Thursday. I mean, O'Gorman's a very tough team. They've already beaten, um, I believe they beat 
Sioux Falls, Washington last week, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure on that in one. In Washington, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it no matter, you know, Gorman has already played a tough schedule, as has Roosevelt. They, Roosevelt's made some pretty interesting trips already this season, too. Oh yeah, and they, uh, I mean, they played uh, in the um, they played in the uh, Target Center. If I they, remember yeah, they played in Minneapolis. So they played uh, <laughs> they played in Minneapolis uh, in the Target Center, and uh, I've played a few other interesting games as well. And uh, hopefully uh, Friday night uh, the Bucks can make it interesting there. Yeah, and that was a very interesting, very interesting road trip for them too. I'm I'm, I'm looking to see how they come back. All right, that'll do it for this week. Uh, for Jeremy Hoyt, this is James Hembrick. Sports Monday with the Preston Dakota.